Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, it is I am the one and only Sonic the Hedgehog here once again, and I'm back for the likes of the Mexi Toys videos once again. And today, we're gonna be presenting you our next redo let's play for our channel. But first off, let's read the story of The Legend of Zelda for the NES. Long ago, Ganon, Prince of Darkness, stole the Triforce of Power. Princess Zelda of Hyrule broke the Triforce of Wisdom into eight pieces and hid them from Ganon before she was kidnapped by Ganon's minions. Link, you must find the pieces and save Zelda. Okay, sounds legitimate for the sake of the actual simple plot. And when you leave the title running, it obviously shows you the whole bunch of items you can able to actually discover. Like, for example, some tons of swords, tons of weapons, and all that stuff, which I suppose we're able to uh, come across into that as soon as we're able to get started with this game. Now, technically speaking, the reason why I say the redo let's play of this is most likely because um, you probably already know about the fact that our original let's play of this game is no longer there. Oh, and by the way, if you managed to see right there, I just love the fact that it did say, please look up on the instructions for details, which that was back in the day when uh, NES uh, cartridges is usually a thing. Although, mind you, about the fact the matter is, though, I've got nothing else to say about it. So, anyway, so the reason why I'm actually decided able to do redo Let's Play for the sake of you guys is the fact that, well, back, looking back in it now, from the likes of in 2018, because that was the last time I played this game. But I did found out for one noticeable problem, and that is the color scheme is a bit dull. And as a result though, while the commentary itself is fine, but it's just the actual colors and the tone of it just feels a bit lackluster in comparison. So here we are in four years later, we finally managed to able to play this again, but this time I'm going to be playing on the NES Classic Mini. Just because, obviously, the quality itself looks a lot more nicer, and on top of all that stuff, though, I just want to able to, for the sake of time, I just want to able to make sure if everything else is all set up right, so... So yeah, it's kind of convenient about the fact that I'm actually going to be focusing on not only a Metroid game, but also the Zelda game as well. So, pretty interesting, all things considered. So, with that being said, yeah, let's get started with The Legend of Zelda for the NES. Now, as you can see, we got ourselves a zero right here, which actually stands for Death Counter. And on top of that, when you start the game off, you realize that Link cannot do anything except walk. And on top of all that stuff, though, it's important to know we always have to go into this one in particular room in mind. And that's what appears to be this little room at the top. So let's go inside. It's dangerous to go alone. Take this. So in some cases, we were able to get actually access to the wooden sword. Which, by the looks of all that stuff though, it seems a very standard weapon. But, if you manage to able to realize, we can now able to actually stab something. And on top of that, we are able to actually access this very cool technique called the sword beam. Which, this will be only accessible if you manage to able to get your full health. Because as you can tell, you start the game off as in three units of uh, health. In this case, three heart containers. But uh, exponentially, but if you're able to actually just start able to go for a challenge ahead, then prepare yourselves, which is by far is the most kind of a tricky game to play through. Especially noticeable, it's kind of hard to go back into this game every nowadays. Especially this is now 2022. Because relatively speaking though, this game has been out for about 36 years ago now. So as a result, yeah, this could be summarized the forms of the controls, and on top of all that stuff, though, Link's, uh, combat maneuvering. So as a result, yeah, there were a few times, though, I apologize for that particular graphical glitches here and there for my capture recording, which I do apologize for that, but that's only mainly because about the fact that there's gonna be a lot of times when my graphical, uh, uh, capture card decides to have some glitches every once in a while, but either way, though, I mo I'm also able to try to fix that, uh, during at some point through the majority of this weekend, because, as far as I'm aware, this game, alongside with Metroid 1, this game is also very short, so we're able to actually guarantee to able to get every single item in the game, 
In addition to every hard containers, I can simply just try to able to find and try to get for certain dungeons throughout. So, because obviously this is the first game in the series, of course, but it's not the first game in the story timeline, because that honor goes to Skyward Sword. <clears throat> Excuse me. But that's only mainly because of the forms of the actual structure or something like that, so... And also, a short things worth noting for is the fact that, relatively speaking now, what makes this game also difficult sometimes is the fact that not only because of the Link's overall control, but there's also certain types of enemies you ever encounter for, and on top of all that stuff, though, as you can see on the top left corner of the screen, the game's map, especially noticeable considering it's nice to able to explore Hyrule for the first time ever, well, that also say applies onto Breath of the Wild as well, but that was before when Breath of the Wild did came out, they can able to explore Hyrule in 3D for the first time ever. And on top of all that stuff though, I got my first game over, especially because um, out, of all the, uh, out of all the actual Zelda games I actually play through on my own time, um, this game didn't exactly age very well, but that's only mainly because of this archaic design choices as far as you know, back in the uh, mid-80s and stuff like that, because mind you about the fact that it's now becoming incredibly archaic in during the future years to come. But for its time though, it is a very impressive game to able to play through, especially noticeable about the fact this is one of those NES games that they, they somehow managed able to feature the actual save battery, so just in case about the fact that you can able to save your game, and then you can able to continue where you're left off, even if you managed able to take a break for the game. So as a result, yeah, it seems like a pretty cool uh, feature on my ad. And it's also is very cool, actually, is the fact that unlike the Japanese version of The Legend of Zelda, that uh, basically the first game in the series, uh, the uh, specifically the Japanese version, does not come out on the, uh, the standard Famicom cartridge. Because no, because instead, this game is made from the likes of the Famicom Disk System, which actually features some interesting sound effects. And on top of all that stuff, though, with some sound, um... Uh, it's hard to explain, really, because I know for a fact that it's been a very long time since I actually last played this game, since I think I do remember playing it on the Wii U, but now I found out that the color scheme is a bit dull in comparison, so... Anyway, so, throughout your journey, you were able to come across into certain shops. Like, for example, I managed able to grind some rupees, and that way, rupees are in-game's currency for the, the majority of the Zelda games, basically. And in order to able to get certain items, like, for example, we got ourselves these bombs, which basically, you can able to use those bombs to able to blow up certain, uh, parts throughout the entire Hyrule itself. Which obviously contains, uh, well, it doesn't usually contain any memorable set pieces, unlike the forms of how it does it on Breath of the Wild. But the game's map, especially noticeable back in the forms of back in the day, the game's map is totally worthless. Like, as you can tell, the little grey box looking uh, thing right there is just a map of Hyrule, which... I highly recommend you able to look upon guides of this game, because you never know of what exactly you're about to go next. And because of this though, that's why I'm essentially going to be able to actually just to rely on, well, internet during that time, especially noticeable about the fact that, well, it's kind of a nuisance if you don't manage to be able to have the map to begin with, so... Anywho, so with that being said though, and uh, especially noticeable, it's a good thing we've got bombs to begin with, because... If we explode that particular thing right there, we have a choice between the medicine or one of those heart containers, as you can see I've got one already. However, if you dare choose the medicine, there is no way you can able to get that heart container, because otherwise, the heart container will be gone for good, and there is no way you can able to get it back. So, as a result, I highly recommend the heart containers, so just in case you can able to survive, uh, throughout Hyrule, throughout the whole entire playthrough, because otherwise, if you accidentally touch one medicine, then you'll be screwed, especially noticeable that you will get a lot of game overs for doing so, so... That's another thing about the fact that this game gets a little bit more difficult, is the fact that certain types of enemies you ever encounter for, but that's only mainly because certain enemies can get a little bit more aggressive, especially noticeable that Again, it does kind of reminds me of something related to Breath of the Wild, except that in Breath of the Wild, the actual Hyrule itself is pretty huge, and all that stuff though. I mean, I'll give this game worth credit it's due, 
that uh, this was actually the introduction to one of those, uh, the most iconic uh, video game fantasy video games, especially noticeable, I'm always a huge Zelda fanatic, as well as the forms of Mario, Kirby, Sonic the Hedgehog, and all that stuff. So anyways, there's another secret right here, and this obviously leads us to another similar room as the forms of how it does it from that other secret we've already discovered earlier. And as you can tell, we've now actually got another heart container instead of the medicine, just because again, medicine doesn't do much apart from the fact that you can able to revive with it, I'm pretty sure. Despite the fact that it has been a quite few days since I actually last played this for sure, so... Anyway, so a few things I want to explain while I was continuing exploring through the rest of Hyrule. Uh, relatively speaking though, is the fact that today's day is of course the, uh, the 3rd of December today, in this case in 2022 today. Only 22 days to go until we are basically going to be approaching on to Christmas Day. So as a result, before it gets more details on that, here's another secret right there, which as you can see we receive a little bit of a note. And basically what you can do with it is that you can able to actually, well, assuming if you try to find the old woman somewhere, uh, basically that way it gives you an opportunity to able to actually just, uh, well, I would say give you certain medicines I'm sure. So in some cases though, and I think there's also another secret, if you go in here, as you can see on screen, and basically this will lead you to one of those, another secret, which in some cases though, we actually stumbled across into that guy over there just keeps on saying it's a secret to everybody. So in some cases though, since we've touched certain, uh, well, only one rupee, but ultimately speaking though, as you can tell, I actually received 100 of these things. So as a result though, it's a pretty easy way to able to grind uh, extra rubies for that matter though. Although, unlike the future games in this series though, that um, in order to get rubies in this game though, sometimes you have to able to find them on certain secret caves, whilst other times, as you can see on screen, that if you kill certain amount of enemies and stuff like that, basically though, certain rubies do randomly pop up, especially noticeable that, well, for example, if one of those rubies is actually flashing, uh, basically you get, yourself, you get yourselves about just only one rupee. But if it's uh, still blue, well, usually a blue ruby for that matter, you get yourselves about five rupees. So that seems pretty uh, worth it, especially noticeable if you really want to get something throughout the game. Well, the majority of this, speaking of which, certain items are pretty expensive. And as a result, you need to grind a lot of rupees. Oh, in some cases though, we got ourselves the upgraded sword actually. So as you can tell, that uh, basically in order to able to actually access one of your upgraded swords, usually in certain locations, as you can tell, we do need to be able to get more hearts, because otherwise, if you're pretty much underleveled, basically though, that you need to be able to keep on exploring through the rest of Hyrule, and on top of all that stuff though, you have to be able to actually just to, to like, you know, search for certain secrets, or complete certain dungeons, and you name the rest. Speaking of dungeons though, uh, this game right here does only contain about, I would say, 9 dungeons in a game. So relatively speaking though, the ultimate goal of this game is pretty simple. We need to be able to complete, uh, let's say roughly about 8 or so uh, dungeons throughout the game. And then basically it's your job to able to actually rescue Princess Zelda. And as you can tell, uh, the piece of wisdom has been scattered to pieces. And we need to find 8 of those pieces of uh, Triforce of Wisdom, until you're able to actually stumble across into yourselves, well, the Triforce of Wisdom. Because obviously, that uh, the Triforce itself has been divided into three different categories, like the Triforce of Power, Triforce of Wisdom, and as for the Triforce of Courage, as for this game, doesn't it technically exist yet? Especially noticeable about the fact the matter is though, well, as you probably know it's about the forms of the Zelda uh, enthusiastics and stuff like that, or enthusiasms and stuff like that, that basically Ganon does manage to claim himself the Triforce of Power, and Zelda is actually considered this to be the Triforce of Wisdom. Well, for the Triforce of Courage though, like I said before, this game doesn't technically exist yet until Zelda 2 The Adventure of Link, but basically though is the fact that the entire important story about the forms of the Triforce of Courage will come into play. So anyways, let's just go ahead and buy ourselves the next item, which appears to be this blue flame, 
which basically what that item does, it allows you to able to burn certain bushes, which it also hides some secrets. So I'll try my best able to actually find certain secrets throughout the game, but not all of them, mind you, because out of all the actual Zelda games I actually played, this one I played the least, especially noticeable because, well, again, it's hard to get back into this game nowadays after, uh, you know, playing the future games in the series, because I know for the fact that for the future Zelda games in the series, does manage to able to improve upon the controls, as well as the forms of how, uh, well, I do get it because of the limitations of the NES cartridge and stuff like that, but also it's the fact that we have less buttons to work with, well, Kind of like the forms of how it does it on Link's Awakening for the Game Boy, alongside with the Orco of, uh, um, Orco of Ages and Orco of Seasons as well. So anyways, let's burn this bush down, and from here we're able to see another secret, which actually gives us, what else? Even more rubies. So in some cases we got 100 more, so in some cases though, I think we'll pretty much guarantee we do need to be able to find more of those rupees as much as we can, Especially, like I said before, certain items for the item shop but for spending a lot of rupees is pretty expensive. So as a result, yeah, there's going to be a lot of grinding around here, so... But uh, you, do, you do need to be very careful of the forms of certain secrets sometimes, because other times though that... Well, sometimes for secrets about the fact that certain secrets throughout the entire game does give you some hip, uh, helpful... Uh, um, stuff like, you know, grinding, uh, giving you extra rubies, but there are quite a few times though that there's a random guy that you have to pay for certain, you're forced to pay certain amount of rubies for door repairs, like, door repairs, is this just a flipping bush? Like, seriously, whoever thought that was actually, like, the most punishing thing out of them all though, is just the fact that, well, I just got nothing more else to add, so... But as you probably tell from this point, I've got myself my second game over on this run, but that's only mainly because, well, I will say this right now, although before we get into more details on that though, so we meet up with this old woman right there, and if you pass her a note, she actually offers you to be able to buy some medicine, which I'm actually going to be skipping this for now, because I'm actually going to be saving my rupees for later weapons, so... That's essentially what I was going to be doing anyway, so... <clears throat> Excuse me, I've got something on my throat there, I do apologize for that. So, uh, yeah, a few things I want to explain also is the fact that, well, in addition to happy 12-year anniversary of the release of Super Mario All-Stars re released on the Wii, well, despite the fact there's actually a port to the Super Nintendo game, but also happy 12th birthday to release of, uh, well, Donkey Kong Country Returns, specifically in the UK releases of those two games combined. And on top of that, a uh, Look Before You Sleep episode from My Little Pony Friendship is Magic has now officially become um, 11 years old now. So yeah, time flies, doesn't it? And of course we got even more rupees, so now we're on 255 of these things, which is, seems, you know, quite a lot and all that stuff though. So, not much else to add around here. Oh yeah, there are a couple of times though that you will stumble across ourselves these little hearts that it will uh, pop out of nowhere for certain uh, enemy encounters and all that stuff. So uh, yeah, not much else to add. So oh, and there are a few times though there are rare occasions where you stumble across a stop clock watch, which basically if you obtain that item, basically that actually freezes enemies into place. So. Yeah, it seems kind of uh, interesting to say the least, especially it does kind of remind me of something similar to the forms of the stopwatch from the likes of Castlevania, but uh, except the fact that we're actually on the top-down uh, perspective. And also there are a few times though you will come across into those fairy fountains, which as you can see, we actually stumbled across into one of them, which actually allows you to be able to get your um, most of your health back. Which, as a result, it is super recommendable, especially noticeable if you think you're about to get a game over again, well, that'll be the best spot for you to able to actually just to get your health back. So, yeah, that's sure it's something, so... But I digress, but before we move along, we need to head over to this spot right here, because I'm pretty sure there might be something well hidden if we try to able to interact with the statue, go completely crazy, by the way, and from here, we're able to actually get ourselves another shop, and the one we need to go after is this blue ring right there. As for the other two items, 
well, we'll point out whatever we get into it. So, yeah, as you can tell, if we leave the screen, as you can see, we got ourselves our different colored tunic right there. Which means, since when you start the game off, that you pretty much start the game as in green tunic um, outfit. Whilst in here though, if you manage to able to stumble across a blue ring, this allows you to able to get a lot of defense. So in some cases though, that will be recommendable, because especially noticeable about the fact that this game gets a bit, I'm not gonna lie, a lot more punishing than ever. So as a result though, I highly recommend you able to go after the blue ring no matter what, because otherwise, if you don't, and then you might as well able to get yourselves butt kicked by a lot of enemy encounters, especially strong variations of certain enemy encounters as well. So, yeah, that'll be the best pro tip I might add. And also, there's another bush we can burn down, such as this one over there. And from here, we can able to get, of course, another heart container, which I'm about to choose one right now. So, in some cases, we're now on to six heart containers. So, yeah, pretty swell stuff, I have to say so. Even though before when, uh... I won't classify the same before A Link to the Past exists. That, uh, basically, we'll start to introduce into ourselves pieces of heart. Whilst in this game, all it gets is just heart containers, and that's pretty much about it. So... Because, again, this is the first game in the series, of course. Oh, and there are a couple of times, though, as well. Uh, you will come across into some random fairies, which actually gives you some more health back. Although, it doesn't happen very, uh, very often, because, again, certain item pop-ups do attempt to come, do become, like, a lot random sometimes. But anyway, so let's go and get started with the forms of one of the first, uh, dungeons in the game. So in some cases, here we go, on to, I would say, this dungeon's name is the Eagle. Because I'm kind of sure to you about the fact that, well, if you're trying to able to come across into one of those important key items, for not only for keys, for able to actually access to locked doors, but also if we manage to able to find one of those uh, important items that we will we'll come across into one eventually, but uh, for now on, though, I will go ahead and take care of the forms of some certain enemy encounters, like uh, certain bats, or in some cases, uh, stealthers right there. Because uh, for the most part, though, uh, sometimes depending on the difficulty of this game comes from not only for overworlds, but it's also the dungeons themselves. I mean, the, in the beginning, it's not so bad. Like, obviously with level 1, especially noticeable the next dungeon afterwards as well, that they are totally a piece of cake. However, though, whenever we get to the later portions of the dungeons themselves, you will come across into the forms of some dangerous enemies. So as a result, though, and by the way, if you blow up this bomb right here on this wall, basically it acts out as the shortcut of any sorts. So, and here we are, we got ourselves the forms of the dungeon map. Which, as you can tell, if you stumble across a dungeon map, basically you can now able to see what the dungeon layout is actually look like. And as a result, that way you can be able to get the opportunity that you will able to not only find uh, the boss room, but also um, certain uh, uh, parts throughout the dungeon itself. So as a result, yeah, uh, sometimes though the dungeons themselves can be confusing um, at times if you have a first time playing a game. But uh, when you're able to get the hang of it though, it might not be too uh, drastically difficult or anything else like that. But uh, Sometimes, though, it's just the fact they always have to rely on guides in order to able to proceed throughout the majority of the entire portion of the game, so... And also, we have to watch out for these little spikes. And then if we go in here, this is where we find ourselves another one of those key items in the game, and that's what appears to be the actual bow itself. However, we can't use it at the moment, because as you can tell, we haven't got arrows with us, so we do need able to buy uh, arrows, if we somehow manage to able to grind for more rubies as much as we can. So, yeah, that might be subbed up as the forms of this game, is the fact that you have to deal with a lot of grinding for more rubies. So, not able to buy some more items as far as I'm aware, so... But I digress. So, another thing I would like to explain is the fact that in addition to I'm looking forward to the new Super Mario Bros. movie coming up next year, but also, I'm very excited by the forms of not only that we're able to actually see uh, a new trailer for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, which I did have a brief look at the trailer, and it looks pretty awesome to be able to see the Guardians of the Galaxy again. Although, recently I've watched the Holiday Special, which I found it pretty cool and hilarious at the same time. And in addition to that though, that's uh, 
I would say Transformers are Beasts of the Dark. No way, Rise of the Beasts. Although, despite the fact that I wasn't really into Transformers as much as the next guy, but um, as a result of that kind of stuff, though, that might be saying something. But also, out of nowhere, that we actually finally got ourselves the final name of uh, the Indiana Jones uh, fifth movie after the events of, uh, well, almost 15 years ago since uh, Crystal, uh, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull back in 2008. Despite it does have a lot of mixed reception on that film. But anyways, let's go and take down the first boss in the game, which appears to be like a random dragon th fella. But, um, yeah, he's pretty easy. Especially noticeable, this is the first dungeon in the game, but, and it's also because about the fact that we actually got an upgraded sword, from the likes if you ever try to get some more hearts, so. But there's also another sword coming up, but uh, we'll save that for later, so. And every once in a while, when if you defeat certain bosses throughout the dungeon, basically though, you can get one of those heart containers as well, so uh, that'll be pretty cool though. Especially noticeable about the fact that, well, relatively speaking though, there's not much else I can honestly try and explain about it. But as you can tell, we've got, uh, we somehow got ourselves our first piece of the Trifles of Wisdom. So uh, I think we only got about uh, seven of them left. So as a result though, yeah, as you can see, we can't select the bow because like I said before, we do need arrows in order to able to actually use the weapon, so... But again, it's just a matter of the forms of trying to able to utilize rupees to spend on a lot of these uh, things itself to begin with, so... And speaking of rupees, there's another secret. So in some cases, this time we can only get 30 rupees, but that's fine, because... Either way, I'm pretty sure that, uh... As soon as you're able to know the entire locations of the entire Hyrule itself, then basically you might find yourselves a lot more comfortable to play around with. Well, sometimes you do need to stumble across into a frustrating difficulty sometimes, and that was the wrong bush to burn. But luckily though, you can able to actually reuse the actual blue flame as soon as you're able to actually go to the next screen, so... Oh, and that also reminds me that this game also, like... Okay, there's the correct bush I need to burn. And from here we get ourselves, what else? Even more rupees. In some cases, once again, 30. So... Anyway, so there is also a, technically another NES game that did usually came out in... I would say, I can't remember what exactly what that game uh, did release on. But I do not definitely know it came from the NES, of course. But I do definitely know for the fact that there was that one particular game that plays kind of similar to this game. Which appears to be Highlight. Which, as a result, that particular game is kind of like the Zelda clone. Except the fact that, well, Zelda itself did it right, despite how archaic it is. Whilst in Highlight, it feels very, very awkward to play. And also, there is only one musical track in Highlight, which appears to be an exact copy of the Indiana Jones theme, speaking of which. So speaking of Indiana Jones, though, we finally got ourselves the final name for the film, for the fifth entry in the series, and that's what it appears to be... Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. So, okay, that seems, uh, kind of an interesting title. Although, especially noticeable about the fact the matter is, though, again, it's been 15 years since we actually last seen Indiana Jones in action, since in 2008. So, as a result, I'm very curious to see how that film's gonna be, uh, presenting with until specifically next year in 2023 which also applies for Super Mario Bros. Movie, and uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, and on top of that, Fast and Furious 10, or Fast X, if to be more specific. So anyways, now we actually access to the arrows. So in some cases though, but well, what makes things interesting is that if you use the bow and arrow, as you can see, one of our rupees is actually lost by one. So this means, in order to able to use ru- uh, no, the bow and arrows in this game, that basically though, uh, rupees will be the only option, because otherwise, if you use it quite a lot, basically you're wasting a lot of rupees, which I really use, uh, the bow and arrows, apart from one important aspect, but that'll be for later, so... Anyways though, so let's go ahead and uh, defeat certain enemies right here. And I think we might as well do one more dungeon for this video, just to make things a little bit more faster and quick. Although, mind you, certain dungeons in this game is actually really, really short. Well, despite how confusing that can be sometimes, but I will try my best able to be as fast as I can for able to not only explore certain areas, but also just trying to able to complete 
uh, certain dungeons throughout, so... That might be seems a little bit more understandably so. And here we are, into the next dungeon as we go along. So in some cases, this dungeon is named is the Moon. Now, the reason why I say the Moon is most likely because, well, relatively speaking though, we can just simply just, well, explore the rest of the dungeon itself like this. But, uh, you get the idea about that. Oh, and there was also the forms of that particular compass item, which I'm about to find out until whenever I'm trying to explore this entire dungeon itself like this. But, uh, relatively speaking, no, there's not much else to say about this, so... And also, we only got about four more days to go until Mario Kart 8 Deluxe uh, Wave 3 is about to be releasing, so I'm very excited about this. Especially that we only got about... Um, I would say five days left now, until the Game Rewards is about to be able to get its presentation. And especially noticeable, I cannot wait to see whoever gets nominated for the sake of the game's marketing. And on top of that, uh, what something new will be announced for the Game Rewards. Which, I'm most likely concerned that um, The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom might be appeared on uh, the Game Rewards this year. Especially because they did that sort of similar thing as the forms of how it does it in Breath of the Wild. Although, I'm really, I um, highly doubt that um, potentially until next year, perhaps, that uh, they will try to mention something like DLC um, discussions or something. Well, mind you, we're not exactly at 2023 just yet, though. But either way, though, that's far as saying goes. I think that's as far as I can try to explain about any of these things. And, um, I suppose, um, I would like to also mention something related to other thing else, uh, or anything else to be more sp uh, specifically. Um, unfortunately though, I no longer have my DVD versions of, uh, not only Early Man, but also Shaun the Sheep the movie, and on top of that, Shaun the Sheep Farm Again. But that's only mainly because, well, at this point in time, I think I've decided able to move on to a different franchises I always adore. Like, for example, Disney films, uh, it's still with me. And, um, on top of that, uh, DreamWorks movies are still there with me. And, uh, the Pixar films, despite I'm not gonna get all of them, but I will enjoy some of these Pixar films no matter what. Well, apart from one exception, which is, of course, Cars 2, but that's besides the point. And, um, on top of that, uh, with the forms of the Rio films, which I'm still keeping, especially, I'm not gonna lie to you, but I'm pretty sure I now give up on the Ice Age uh, movies now. But that's only mainly because, well, I just find them a bit average at best. Well, the first film is alright, but uh, it's just the fact the matter is though, it's just, well, it's just hard to look back into. Especially noticeable because, well, honestly, I honestly prefer the Rio films a lot more in my opinion. Especially because of how colourful it looked. And on top of that, I enjoy the nature of, you know... Exploring through Brazil and stuff like that, which I will say, when I looked at it on the actual real world map and all that stuff, it does look very, very cool, I'm not gonna lie. And on top of all that stuff though, with all these musical numbers they included and all that stuff. So, yeah, that basically summarizes it such. And also, I no longer have uh, Snoopy and Charlie Brown, the Peanuts movie. I think it's pretty because about the fact that, well, I just instantly forgot about it. It's kind of a shame, honestly, because I do like the sense of premise of the forms of this entire art style, but unfortunately I've seemed to lost interest, so it's kind of unfortunate, but at least I give it a shot, I suppose. But uh, for now on though, I'll just strictly focusing on certain franchises of certain films I always enjoy, especially with, you know, Sonic the Hedgehog 3 will be on its way on 2024, and a new Mario movie, which should be on next year, as I said before. And on top of that, Fast and Furious X, and, um... Or 10, to be more specifically. And, um... Uh, also, say applies with, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. I'm not exactly sure if I was gonna see Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, um, in day one, though. But I shall pretty much get to see what happens there. Especially that the Disney Plus is now usually a thing, of course. So in some cases, though, I'll definitely still have my chance to be able to actually see multiple uh, Marvel films during the course of a Disney Plus description for it. So, yeah, you probably get the idea about that, so... 
Oh yeah, there's the compass I was talking about. If you grab that, basically as you can see on the little uh, map screen, there we actually see a little dot at the very end of that, well, let's just say on the top portion of the map, which basically means that's what the Triforce leads us. So, all the piece of the Triforce of Wisdom is actually leads us to, so... Which, uh, that was when, uh, after we did deal with the boss fight first, so... But, um, yeah, I guess I have nothing else to say about the forms of today's discussion for you guys. I mean, sure it's, uh, pretty self-explanatory when it comes to discussing on things. Although, I should probably say this right now. Uh, let me know in the comments down below for the question of the day. Uh, which one of those movies are you looking forward to next year when it comes to 2023? For me, though, definitely the Mario movie, of course. And on top of that, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. And, uh, I'm not exactly sure about Fast and Furious 10, though. But I will, uh, find out until when that film actually comes out. Although, relatively speaking, though, it's just the fact that, unfortunately, though, uh, one of those films in particular, Puss in Boots, The Last Wish, uh, basically, though, that film has been delayed on the UK, but that's only mainly because about the fact that, well, well, uh, as far as I can tell, because of the forms of Avatar The Way of Water is going to be on its way to make things a lot more dominated for box office, for as far as I'm aware, but, um, I will promise you guys, I will be able to see the first film on, uh, thankfully it's on Disney Plus, actually, so I'll get my opportunity to be able to see that. So, yeah, just before I get into the sequel, so... Anyway, so speaking of such, though, here's the next boss in the game. It is also pretty easy as well, and you simply send bombs into him, and that's all you have to do, which his name was, is, uh, Dodongo. So, yeah, pretty self-explanatory this boss fight right here, so... And there's the second piece of the Triforce of Wisdom. So two dungeons down, and quite a lot of dungeons to go. So I think, suffice to say, I think our Mars will end things off at this point right here, so join me uh, tomorrow for more of Let's Play of The Legend of Zelda. It's the fact that we'll move on to... Oh god, that thing is alive. <laughs> okay, um... Anyway, join me next time is the fact that we'll go ahead and explore for more dungeons and able to discover some more secrets here and there. So I'll see you guys, like I said, until tomorrow. Later, fellas.